This body of work is a hypothesis and theory based on syncretic research. This research is meant to unite people and open up discussions about our reality. All we ask is that you be kind to each other once you watch this and start discussing and dissecting it. We also ask and strongly encourage you and everybody to re-upload and mirror this on any and every platform, redub it in your language, do reaction videos, make screenshots, remixes, refixes, and get this out there. One last disclaimer, some of the maps on these models and elements are not to spec and I did them to be as visual as possible, so don't mind some of the maps being off, distorted, or totally wrong. They are meant for representation purposes only. So grab your snacks and drinks and get ready to have your mind blown. Let's go. Before we get into the details, it's extremely important that you have a full understanding of the construct of our geocentric electromagnetic universe. If you're not familiar with this geocentric model, we're going to leave links in the description for you to catch up on the basics. In short, we're not on a ball. Our Earth currently consists of four concentric rings of physical land, beginning and spiraling out from the zero point axis at the center of the plane. Just like a drop of water that falls into a larger body of water, therefore creating a ripple effect beginning from its point of impact, concentrically expanding outwards. The very middle center of this vast earthly concentric plane is what's known as the zero point axis. This is what we refer to as the magnetic north pole. This central pole is not just a symbolical metaphor, but an actual physical marker said to be a magical, or should I say, magnetic pillar, sometimes referred to as a holy mountain or the tree of life. The first big red pill you're gonna have to swallow is that beyond all these dimensional fields of energy from where we are now, in our northern and southern extremities, are other extraterrestrial lands inhabited by other extraterrestrial civilizations. This is what we might call extraterrestrial outer and inner space. Extraterrestrial outer and inner Earth. I know, it sounds crazy, just bear with me. Each of these four-dimensional rings of Earth have their own eco, lunar, solar systems and seasons, and their own sun and moons, which would be our current seven wandering stars. Saturn and Jupiter being the solar sun and lunar moon of the outermost ring, domain, or realm of Earth. Mars and Venus being the solar sun and lunar moon of the next concentric domain of Earth inside that. This Mars and Venus domain would be the main realm beyond our southern Antarctic boundary and the Aurora Australis electromagnetic field. Then, of course, we have our own solar sun, Apollo, and lunar moon, Artemis, in this domain. And last but not least, Mercury within the inner central realm beyond our northern Arctic boundary and Aurora Borealis electromagnetic field. This inner star, Mercury, is androgynous, both a solar sun and lunar moon in one. It's sometimes referred to as the inner Earth Sun or Black Sun or Planet Nibiru or Planet X. Now, the full expanse of our entire earthly plane with all the different realms would be what the ancient Greeks referred to as Mother Gaia, the Kemetic Egyptians called the Benben or Mother Geb, and the Indovetics referred to as the Bumandala. In this presentation, we're going to explain and show how this spiral expansion of space, time, and matter began and continues to be. Let's go. This calendar is a modern interpretation and mix of the Aztec Mayan calendar, Egyptian Dendra stone, the various Chinese and Indian Dharma wheels, as well as other ancient cosmological and universal clocks and calendars. Many ancient cultures, civilizations, mystics, and researchers have created and depicted various cosmic clocks and calendars over the ages. Some simple, others complex, but one thing is for sure. They all knew that all time operates in a cyclical pattern. They knew that everything in existence has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Birth, experience, growth, and death. Sunrise, midday, sunset, midnight. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, iron, bronze, silver, gold. You get it. So our cosmic calendar of time is a macrocosmic and syncretic mirror reflection of those observable microcosmic clocks, calendars, cycles, and seasons of time. And as always, our research is embedded on the foundation of natural and observable everyday reality. 
Hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will have a better understanding of how different ages, races, civilizations, and realms have come about over time within our electromagnetic cosmic egg universe. So in order to understand our calendar better, we need to break down something known as an epoch. Our epoch here is going to be 24,000 years for one full cycle. What is the definition of an epoch? A division of time that is itself a subdivision of a larger period of time. Think of seconds to minutes to hours to days to months to years. Good examples of epochs. An epoch is also subdivided into ages corresponding to a series of chronological changes or events. An epoch can sometimes be referred to as an era, age, period, time, eon, span, stage, or point in history. Universal epochs are also sometimes referred to as a platonic year or a cosmic day. Just like a clock striking 12 and starting another cycle or day. So our epochs are 24,000 years, reflective of our natural 24-hour day and clock. 24 hours in a solar day, 24,000 years in a cosmic day. The first thing we're going to do is lay a typical 12-hour dial. We're going to follow this by also laying 12 months of the year and follow that ring by a ring of the 12 zodiac signs matching up to each month. The next ring is going to represent our four seasons, autumn, winter, spring, and summer. The ring inside this one is going to represent our 24 hour clock, with 6 p.m. being represented at 12. The next ring is our meridian. We have midnight, quarter past, half past, and quarter two. And inside this ring are going to be our four concentric lands, eras, ages, civilizations, and solar systems. As stated, we've already had four epoch cycles and we are currently a quarter past the fifth. Now, just as there are four earthly physical realms, there are also four physical humanoid root races associated with the creation of each realm. These four root races are the Hyperboreans, Lemurians, Atlanteans, and Aryans. But there's also a fifth race of beings that lives in the center, Mount Meru, of our Earth. This is the master root race, the Polarians. Unlike the other four, the Polarians are semi-ethereal, meaning not completely physical beings. They do not have a definitive skin pigment, size, color, or race. Having said that, they are often depicted as being somewhat indigo bluish, translucent beings. The very middle or central point of Earth is where the earth and the heavens meet, and this is where the gods live. We propose that the Polarians are able to transverse between the two worlds, the heavens or spiritual realms above and earth slash physical planes below. Anyway, these Polarians began the human race at pole position. They were the very first forms of earthly beings to manifest on this plane. All the other four root races were seeded by the Polarians hence the term master race. We could also call the Polarians the guardians of the earth. So this first Polarian epoch, or first 24,000 years, centered around the cosmic tree of life, was regulated by the grand heavenly first and largest solar system, Neptune and Uranus, the highest and first two wandering stars, or sun and moon, of our universe, albeit semi-ethereal in nature. And, at the end of their epoch, the Polarians completed their first cycle or circle of cosmic time, 24,000 years of experience. This was the end of their epoch. At this point, the Polarians created their very first physical manifestation. And so, the Hyperboreans realm and root race are created. A new physical paradigm emerges, unfolding out of the north polar center axis, aka the very first ripple. We could also say the tree of life gave birth to its first physical fruit or seed. This process is what we might call a pole shift, the very first pole shift of our Earth. This new Hyperborean realm comes complete with its own solar system to regulate its physical space, time, and matter. 
The very first Sun and Moon are also created, Jupiter and Saturn. However, at this stage, they are androgynous. They are one. They are not separated. They only separate at the end of their epoch. This is the first domain to experience fully physical earthly space, time, and matter, all regulated by the very first earthly solar system. This Hyperborean realm that unfolded out of the center pillar was the very first Garden of Eden, surrounding the Tree of Life, or Mount Meru, at the center. Keep this in mind for the rest of the creation process. Every time a new ripple comes out, it is the new Garden of Eden. Over the next 24,000 years, during their epoch, the Hyperborean realm was gradually pushed outward away from the center as a new realm and physical root race was created. The second ripple, the Lemurian realm and root race is seeded. A second pole shift and again a new paradigm emerges, pushing the old Hyperborean realm outwards and away from the central pillar or tree of life. This is also where Saturn, aka Kronos, and Jupiter, aka Rhea, separate and start their orbit. This second realm, the Lemurians, also get their own sun and moon, which is at that point in time also androgynous, a sun and moon in one, which will in 24,000 years be known as Mars and Venus. During this epoch, the Lemurians are the Garden of Eden, and Mars and Venus, the androgynous sun and moon, regulates its cycles, seasons, and ages of this new realm and domain. Don't forget, the Lemurians were also seeded from the Polarians, the master root race, and not the Hyperboreans going inward. All races were created and seeded from the Polarians. So the Lemurian realm is the second Garden of Eden, and again, after cyclical time, when their epoch ends, they too were pushed outward to make way for the third root race. The Atlantean realm and root race is seeded. This is pole shift number three. Mars and Venus now separate into two and start their orbit. This new Atlantean realm, like the previous two, was seeded with its own androgynous sun and moon that will eventually turn into Apollo, our sun, and Artemis, our moon, to regulate and control the cycles, seasons, and ages of that realm. This Atlantean root race and realm is the one we currently inhabit. All human races in this realm of Earth are predominantly Atlanteans. You are an Atlantean. During this Atlantean epoch, we in this realm were the Garden of Eden at the center. And once again, over cyclical time, 24,000 years, history repeats itself. Atlantis fell, or rather sank, when the Great Deluge or Flood happened, and reset us from the center to where we currently are, also finally setting Apollo and Artemis into their orbit. And so the Aryan root race was seeded out from the fourth and most recent pole shift. This is the current Garden of Eden. And to give us a point on our timeline, this Aryan root race and realm was seeded about 6,000 years ago to join the human race. And as our fractal pattern continues, just like the realms before it, the Aryan realm was birthed with its own solar system, Mercury, its androgynous sun and moon to regulate and control the cycles, seasons, and ages of that new domain. And so, here we are, 6,000 years into the Aryan, or fifth, epoch. In summary, we have five epochs so far. The Master Race, the Polarians, 24,000 years later, the Hyperborean Realm was created, 24,000 years after that, the Lemurian realm was created, then the Atlantean, then the Aryan. And according to many ancient scriptures, mythologies, and mystics, there are two more epochs to come, meaning seven epochs, seven earthly realms, and seven root races. Moving on. You'll also notice in this realm of Earth we are currently in, there are four main races. All the other races in between are mixed races or rather mixes of these four sub and root races. The black races have their DNA lineage from the very first earth root race, the Hyperboreans. All native black cultures of this realm predominantly have their cultural beliefs and practices handed down by the Hyperborean root race, sometimes referred to as the Anunnaki. The 
Oriental Asian races have their DNA lineage from the second root race, the Lemurians. And likewise, the Oriental cultures stem their beliefs and practices from the Lemurian root race commonly and mistakenly referred to as the Reptilians. The Indo-Asian races have their DNA and lineage from the third root race, the Atlanteans. The Indo-Asians naturally stem their beliefs and practices from the Atlantean root race of their current realm. The Indo-Asians naturally stem their beliefs and practices from the Atlantean root race of this current realm. This means the Indo-Asians or Vedic Indian races are the original root race lineage of this Atlantean realm. And the white races have their DNA lineage from the most recent fourth root race, the Aryans. And of course, most of the white cultural influences we see today are seeded from the Aryan root race currently at the center, Garden of Eden. The Aryans are what most religious texts and mythologies refer to as the current gods, or sometimes fallen angels. The Aryans are also sometimes confused with the Palladians, aka Palarians, who are semi-ethereal beings that live at the very center, Mount Meru, and not in the current Aryan Eden realm. Now, although we in this realm all appear to be different races within our different sub and mixed race lineage and traits, we are actually one race. This is due to the mixing of genetic codes over time. We are all predominantly Atlantean humans, only with slight genetic variances, most notably skin pigmentation, hair structure, eye color, and cultural and religious programs. In fact, most of the racial and religious divisions and wars fought today have their roots seeded from past wars between the four root races. We Atlanteans in this realm inherited our predisposed prejudices of one another from outside influences. Now, we hypothesize that all the other Earth realms would have many different multicultural sub and mixed races in their own domains, just like we have in this realm. Meaning, there are probably thousands of different sub and mixed races and cultures within the different domains across the entire plane of our Earth. But, fundamentally, every root, sub, and mixed race on Earth is of Polarian origin. Every physical conscious being in existence on Earth is of Polarian origin. With all the various solar systems and extraterrestrial civilizations divided and separated from one another by the various toroidal electromagnetic fields, aka the Van Allen belts. These electromagnetic belts do periodically open and close or weaken and strengthen dependent on the various universal and cosmic cycles, seasons, and ages. This periodically happens to allow the sharing or rebalancing of conscious energy, technology, and knowledge between all the different earthly dimensional realms. And we are fast approaching the next opening of these electromagnetic barriers. This opening event will be a revelation that will impact us all in this realm, collectively and individually. We can already see the birthing pains of this great cosmic event with the current so-called conscious awakening and unusual weather patterns. Moving on, we must remember that these physical constructs we call bodies are just that. They are bodies, vehicles, avatars that carry the real living Polarian conscious energy or spirit being within it. This conscious energy within us that is here experiencing, learning, growing, and sharing is what some might call a spirit or a soul. This is the real you, your soul, your conscious energy. And we all know energy has no color or race or nationality or prejudices, just polarity, positive energy, good vibes or people or souls, and negative energy, bad vibes, people or souls. And as such, the human race is just part of the temporary physical journey, individually and collectively. What many in modern times term as the matrix or what the ancients called the Maya, the illusion. Next, let's explore exactly how cosmic epochs and ages work using the current Aryan epoch calendar as our reference. You'll notice the outside rings note our months of the year as well as our 12 zodiac signs. The 12 solar months are actually a microcosmic reflection of the 12 zodiac constellations. These 12 zodiac constellations are our heavenly cosmic clock rotating above us. As they rotate, each constellation has its own energies that subconsciously influence and help guide us consciously here on the earthly plane, both individually and collectively. These 12 months are further divided into our four seasonal sections, autumn, winter, spring, and summer, which in cosmic terms are known as the four seasons of conscious evolution. These conscious seasons are what the Greeks called the four ages of man and Vedic scriptures called the Yuga ages. 
These four Yuga Ages are the Golden Age, Satya Yuga, Silver Age, Terta Yuga, Bronze Age, Dwapara Yuga, and Iron Age, Kali Yuga. A full epoch, 24,000 years, is broken up into eight Yuga Ages. Therefore, each Yuga Age is 3,000 years. You'll also notice there are more Golden or Yellow Ages than any other. This is because the Golden Ages mirror the Sun's presence during the course of our 12 calendar month solar season. So as you can see, lots of sunshine in the summer, a little less in autumn and spring, and little to none in winter. Of course, sunshine in this case is translated into conscious intelligence. And obviously, the Yuga Ages of our universal summer are much higher states of consciousness than the Yuga Ages of the spring, autumn, and certainly winter ages. We also hypothesize that when golden ages overlap within different realms, there are no torus fields or separation between those particular realms. This means that when the time comes and the golden ages overlap, all lands that overlap can be crossed in and out of. In other words, those particular domains are open and free to interact without restriction. This is because they are oscillating at the same golden ratio of frequency or resonance. So, let's now map the universal, cosmic, and solar timelines of all the individual realms or domains. Mainstream science tells us that the Iron Age began about 6,000 years ago, which mirrors the reset point here, 12 o'clock. They also tell us that the Middle Ages were about 3,000 years ago from today, which again mirrors the timeline here. And this timeline is also the common narrative among most holy books. So our calendar has our realm or domain beginning this epoch 6,000 years ago with the age of Taurus the bull. Interestingly, the Old Testament of the Bible begins in an age where they worshipped the bull. This is symbolical of the first 2,000 years of Taurus astrological energy. After some time, bull worship ended with the story of God telling Abraham to stop bull worship and instead sacrifice a ram. This is symbolical of the change from the Taurus bull age into the Aries ram age. And again, 2,000 years later, Jesus, the fisher of men, comes into play. The Jesus fish symbolism is telling us of the shift from the Aries into the two fish Pisces age. And once again, as we reach the end of the Jesus fish Piscean age, we now see the effects of the new water Aquarian age. Aquarius, of course, is symbolized by the mixing of waters. It is the age of mixing, discovery, disclosure, and technology. If we were to set this calendar to today's date, we would be sitting at just before quarter past reset. 6,000 years into the fifth epoch, bang in the middle of the cosmic winter or iron age of universal collective consciousness. In fact, to be a little more exact, we've got us at two minutes to midnight. Midnight being 2020, minutes being years. Now, this is interesting because mainstream science has something called a doomsday clock. And on the doomsday clock, they are saying the earth is two minutes to midnight or doomsday. It was actually moved from three minutes to two minutes on the 18th of January of 2018. And I'm sure most of you know that doomsday or apocalypse simply means a marked period or shift or change from one thing into another. The end of the old and the beginning of the new. And we are living in extremely exciting times for those who are paying attention to what is going on. Knowledge, truth, new information and discoveries are not to be feared. They are to be embraced. This particular cosmic shift we are about to have is an important one because it's a cardinal shift. This means all four current earthly domains will simultaneously be experiencing their own doomsday or apocalypse or shift of season. So let's go through each realm's cosmic shift. The central Aryan realm will be having a fantastic apocalypse, shifting up from their bronze into their silver age of consciousness. We in this domain, we're having an okay but confusing apocalypse, shifting up and out of our iron age into our bronze age of consciousness. Hence the so-called conscious awakening. Knowledge, information, and data are more readily accessible to the masses than at any other time in this era of recorded history. We can clearly see all these changes slowly taking effect, particularly in the more advanced regions of this domain. We get a lot of knowledge from tech, technology. Now, the domain outside of ours, Mars and Venus, are going through a horrible apocalypse. A real doomsday for them as they reset or fall from their golden ages into their iron age of consciousness. And the last realm, the Hyperborean realm, 
still has one more golden age to go. What's even more interesting though, is the nature of this current and coming cosmic shift. Like we said earlier, the current shift is called a cardinal shift, meaning we are not only having a zodiacal energy shift, but we will also simultaneously be having a physical solar shift to mark all these changes. This simultaneous double transitional shift is known as a cosmic or galactic alignment. So, 2020 means you have perfect vision. Why 20? Why not 10? Or 100? 100%? Well, if you believe, like I strongly do, that we are running on scripts or scriptures, some that we haven't even discovered about ourselves, then you may also hypothesize that in 2020, we will all have perfect vision. What does this mean? It means on the 21st of December, 2020, during the winter solstice, there's going to be a great cosmic solar event that will be seen and experienced by every single conscious being in our universe. This is what is commonly being described as the event. Why December 21st, 2020? There's natural scientific significance of this date with relation to our solar system. Most of you will know that on the azimuthal equidistant geocentric Earth model, the sun coils up and around the electromagnetic dome that encapsulates our Earth for the summers, and coils down towards the end of our solar year to its southernmost position of the Tropic of Capricorn. And on December 21st is at its lowest zenith or y-axis point, the farthest out from our land center and the closest to the Earth vertically. This is what's known as the winter solstice from a northern hemisphere perspective. Once the sun has reached its lowest point, it follows the same gradient circuit, neither ascending or descending for three days before it then begins its journey back up to the Tropic of Cancer towards the top and center of our electromagnetic dome of this domain. Meaning, every year for only these three days of our year, from the 21st to the 24th of December, the sun is neither rising or falling along the electromagnetic Taurus field dome over and around us. The sun only resumes its ascension back up to the top three days after the 21st, on the 25th of December. Sound familiar? Dead for three days, only to rise again? Anyway, if there's to be any kind of cosmic solar event, it would most likely happen during this period when the sun figuratively dies and is waiting to rise again. Using the same principle, we hypothesize that all the other suns in all the other domains follow a similar solar system. As above, so below. As within, so without. However, obviously their seasons and solstices occur at different times in relation to their own individual ecosystems. You've heard us refer to this body of work as the Master Oscillation. That's basically what we're saying. All the luminaries have their own paths. Oscillations, secondary, third and fourth oscillations, and eventually they all line up again. And eventually, eventually, they complete an even bigger cycle fully lining up. And this only happens once every 6,000 years. So on December 21st, 2020, Mercury at the center, our sun in this domain, Mars in the next domain, and Saturn in the last domain, and all the moons on the other side, will all stop and align in the same direction, on the same path and gradient, at the same time, for the first time in 6,000 years. This is what we hypothesize is the long-awaited return of the sun slash sun, or Christ, the galactic alignment, return of Nibiru, or planet X, or consciousness the Great Solar Event. This cosmic solar alignment will take three days to fully align, starting on the 21st of December and ending on the 25th of December. The electromagnetic torus fields in all four realms will either disappear or open up or weaken due to this galactic solar alignment. This is the opening of the portals or windows of the heavens spoken of in the Bible. This opening should occur for seven days, from the 25th to the 31st of December, 2020. It also means everyone on Earth will all be able to see all the different wandering solar systems of all the domains clearly in our skies. Everyone will have 2020 vision. And if you think about it logically, if all the luminaries are at their lowest points, that would make everything above us easy to see, bright and crystal clear. On a side note, isn't it interesting that we've all been conditioned to be the most busy during the specific time of year every year and blinded to the Earth's true oscillations, signs, and beauty? Yeah, we celebrate. However, the ways we do it and the reasons we do it are perverted. Even with how many trees we cut down every year to carry out a ritual, which could actually be a geocentric ritual to begin with. The tree of life, the Christmas tree. 
This period of time is what the ancient cultures were describing when they said there was a time when the sky fell. Many ancient cultures also describe a time where there were many suns and many moons in our sky. And we believe history is about to repeat itself again. This phenomenon will affect and change our atmospheric conditions as well. These events periodically happen over cyclical time in various scales. The last big one occurred in 1859 and was called the Carrington Event. Feel free to look it up. The one coming in 2020 is going to be much, much bigger. This solar alignment is meant to realign cosmic energy and consciousness within the various earthly domains and realms of our Earth. This energy blast will begin at the center of the Earth, or the North Pole. It will spiral outwards towards the edge and bounce back towards the center over a very short period of time. The event itself will be triggered by an electromagnetic sonic boom that will look like what we know as a nuclear atomic bomb. Don't worry though, it will not be an atomic bomb. However, it will positively be nuclear. It will give humanity a new, clear vision for the future, individually and collectively. It will give us 2020 vision. We suspect the current powers that be will attempt to use this natural cosmic event as the ultimate false flag. They may say, aliens did it, or it was caused by global warming, or an attack from across the world. This sonic boom of electromagnetic energy may shut down our entire electric grid instantaneously, causing a collapse of our financial, socio-economic, political, and collective cultural existence as we know it. And thus, this event may be used to pave the way for a new order in our world. But this cosmic event is not to be feared. It is a natural process to allow growth within our individual and collective consciousness. The greenish astral rays that this event will create will cover the entire plane of our Earth for a short period of time. Again, it is not to be feared. Governments and authorities will most likely tell us that this green mist caused by this event is a toxin. They will tell us to stay indoors and not go outside into the radiation, avoid it at all costs. They will say it's harmful radiation. And it will be. For those who have heavy metals in their bodies, i.e. vaccines, iron from meat eating, etc. But for those without harmful chemicals in their bodies, the radiation will radiate and activate dormant DNA, potentially giving you supernatural abilities. Maybe not Superman-like, however a heavy increase in consciousness and your five senses will be expected. And for those of us planning to make the pilgrimage up north to the central realm of our Earth, aka the Garden of Eden, this will be our window of opportunity. Many of you here will also know the Mayans predicted the end of their calendar year or the apocalypse would happen on the 21st of December, 2012. Take note of this date, December 21st, 2012. The Bible also talks about the seven trumpets of preparation before the return of Christ or the Son of God. And after the seventh trumpet, he, the great sun slash sun, will return. Well, we hypothesize that the Mayans were spot on with their prediction. Their December 21st, 2012 date marked the beginning of the end. And the seventh trumpet, of course, seven years later, December 21st, 2019. Which means December 21st, 2020 will be the first year after the seven trumpets, the eighth year. Eight, of course, being the number of completion. And it is also written that everyone on earth will witness the return of Christ consciousness or the Son of God. Side note, we are just citing scriptures. None of us on the team here are religious or trying to push any dogma on anyone. On the 16th of November, 2017, we had a very strange phenomenon occur in this realm. Many of you will remember the red sun and red skies we witnessed and experienced in most of the world. We hypothesize this was a sign of what's to come for those who are paying attention. I know everyone here probably witnessed and experienced this phenomenon, but how many of you actually took note? Of course, mainstream narrative at the time was that it was nothing important, just dust from the desert blocking the sun. And so that little solar event came and went with hardly anyone taking note. Well, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, please take note. Moving on. We hypothesize that the opening of these electromagnetic torus fields on the 25th of December 2020 will create an atmospheric plasma discharge due to all the different solar systems of our cosmos being in direct contact with one another. This will create a rainbow effect atmosphere all over Earth in all the realms. An atmospheric twilight, if you will. More importantly though, this opening event will also allow for physical travel between all four realms or domains for those with the technology or means to do so. 
we might call this real interdimensional or outer or inner space travel. Here's another big red pill. NASA has openly admitted on numerous occasions that we humans cannot go past low Earth orbit or beyond the Van Allen electromagnetic belts or domes. However, during this period, we believe we will finally be able to do so. And what does that mean for us? Well, all these different realms are going through their own individual cosmic shifts, seasons and ages. Because the spiral ripple began at the center, it technically means that, at the center, the inner dome or realm is 3,000 years ahead of us. They have already had 3,000 years of Bronze Age, where we in this realm haven't yet. Our reset happened 3,000 years after theirs, which means, during this seven-day cosmic event, anyone able or allowed to enter this inner realm will technically be time-traveling 3,000 years into the future or ahead of time. In layman's terms, I'm saying that this inner domain is 3,000 years ahead of us technologically, physically, mentally, spiritually, and consciously. And yes, this is where we propose the concept of time travel into the future comes from. And on the flip side, as the ripples shifting outwards towards the Mars domain, they would now be 3,000 years behind us. So, going from our plane to theirs, we would be time traveling backwards 3,000 years. So, why on Earth do the leaders of the free world think it's necessary to militarize space all of a sudden? And, why on Earth are space agencies and governments all talking about being the first to colonize Mars. Let's look at the definition of colonization. The act or process of settling among and establishing control over the indigenous people of an area. Or, the action of appropriating a place or domain for one's own use. Makes you wonder if, the very same so-called elite royal bloodlines and families who colonized this realm during our reset fall from gold to iron 3,000 years ago, are about to do the same thing to this outer domain currently falling from their golden to iron age. As they say, there's nothing new under the sun, and history always repeats itself. With that in mind, let's rewind to something that happened very recently. December 22nd, 2017, the SpaceX Falcon launch. Note the date too, December 22nd, 2017. Wonder how many of you recall the unusual effects witnessed within this particular launch. It looked like the Falcon X was trying to pierce through something. Or perhaps, testing the outer electromagnetic belt or torus field. Kind of makes you wonder, were they trying to beat the clock? Perhaps they succeeded and the secret colonization to Mars is already underway as we speak, hence the militarization of space. However, if they didn't succeed, I'm willing to bet we're going to see another very similar attempt around the same time this year and next. Okay, let's stop for a second. I had to add this after the final edit. This script was written months and months ago. I got this script months and months ago, and as I was developing it, I wondered what would happen mid to late November as I was rendering that part. And the universe didn't let me down. Late November, we have Mars Insight. Crazy. Interdimensional earthly time travel is not just a matter of anyone packing their bags and simply going there. There are obviously many extenuating circumstances, like universal and natural laws, that determine how, when, and who can travel where. For instance, the advanced Bronze and Silver Age beings at the center would not want or allow any primitive Iron Age being from the outside into their domain as it would unbalance their natural harmonic existence. So anyone here, from this realm, wishing to travel ahead of time into this inner realm would generally need to be quote-unquote ahead of their time here, where we currently are, vibrating at a high frequency spiritually, mentally, physically, mind, body, and soul. Many scriptures call this the Days of Reckoning, or Judgment Day, or the return of a messiah or messenger of some kind. In this case, we believe this is the so-called event, the return of messiah. Anyway, let's move on. Those who are ahead of their time in this realm will somehow be given the opportunity to go up ahead of time into this inner or upper realm when the time comes. Likewise, we also believe that those still lagging or holding on to old outdated backwards paradigms will of course naturally be drawn back, back in time to the outer realm. This is where we hypothesize our current elite establishment is planning on going to install a new world order for those beings out there. Most people in our realm though, will be staying here, in this domain, after the event, to continue experiencing, learning and growing in the upcoming new Bronze Age and One World Order. And exactly how or what this new age or order is going to be, who knows exactly, but what we do know is that this domain will not be anything like it currently is today, after the event. And so finally, when these seven days have passed over, January 1st, 2021, on New Year's Day, 
the first day of the first month of 2021, the electromagnetic torus fields or domes of each domain will fall back into place as they were. The celestial bodies will realign and once again the wandering planets or suns and moons will resume their natural cycles, seasons and movements, thus allowing for all the different domains to begin their new respective cosmic solar and celestial ages. And so, the wheels of time will continue to turn, forever moving forward in cyclical cycles and seasons. Now of course, we're very much aware that what we are proposing may happen seems a little outrageous and possibly overwhelming. Or let's face it, you might think this is batch crazy if you're hearing this kind of stuff for the first time. But we're not trying to preach or sell anything, simply sharing information based on cosmological, astrological, mythological, and observable reality syncretized research. This could all be completely wrong, or even slightly wrong, and if so, that's fine, no harm done, life goes on. Or this could be partially right or even very close to the truth. At which point, if or when these events occur, at least those of us who will have received this good news will be prepared mentally, psychologically, and possibly spiritually as well. Of course, right now under this domain, we are collectively going through some very difficult birthing pains as we make this shift. However, those in tune with these changes are adapting and consciously evolving with it. This is the so-called conscious awakening. But even more importantly, those who fully understand what's going on are able to accordingly prepare for the changes that are occurring and coming. This is what JP Morgan meant when he was quoted saying, Astrology. Millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires do. Astrology is simply the natural science of understanding, reading, recording, and following seasons and cycles of the stars and heavens of our universe. Astro simply means heavens or stars. Logi or logi simply means logs or logging. We are astro logging, making logs, logging all the data of the stars. That's all astrology is, reading and recording of the heavens, stars, cycles, seasons, and ages. It's even written in all the ancient scriptures that in the last days, many will not know the exact time and date, but those with wisdom and discernment of the heavens will be prepared. Keep your eyes to the heavens and look out for the signs of what's to come. So the final question, is all of this intelligently designed and if so, by whom or what and why? As far as we're concerned, the answer is definitely yes. Everything we've talked about is most definitely intelligently designed. Microcosms of macrocosms, the system and order of our earth, nature, cosmology, conscious energy, and everything else in our universe is just too beautiful and perfectly symbiotic and synchronized to be a random event or evolutionary. Who or where or what is the creator of all this? Here. Yep, right here in this very room and everywhere else around us and within our universe and beyond. We are all co-creators, conscious spirits, souls, or forces of energy. Everything is energy. Everything is electromagnetic frequency, sound, and vibration, down to the sine wave. Quote unquote, God, any God, all gods, are energy. After all, even religion tells us that God is everything and nothing at the same time, right? The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, intelligent, conscious, immeasurable, unquantifiable, the source, the creator, just is. And since all of us are little conscious fields of energy, that perhaps we are all small manifestations of a greater conscious field of energy, soul or spirit. Perhaps all of us are from the same original source, simply experiencing life individually, separate from the whole, little creators, in quality but not quantity playing a game of cosmic hide-and-seek with ourselves, all part of the same one song, one verse, the universe, just singing in different tunes and octaves at different frequencies, and desperately trying to find a harmonic, melodic balance. And when we do, eventually, individually and collectively find harmony, we will finally be vibrating or singing from the same one verse in our universe. And this is what many mystics, gurus, teachers, cultures, and religions mean when they say we are one. But for now, I think we're extremely far from that, and there's still much learning, exploration, and experiencing and growth to be had on this so-called journey of life before we get to harmony. There are still many seasons to be seen, roles to be played, cosmic ages, seasons, and events to be had amongst all this craziness and confusion we call life. 
So in conclusion, you, me, all of us are just visitors to this time and place, acting out different roles and characters. Some of us are being directed by various scripts and programs or scriptures. But as we begin to consciously awaken to who, what, where we are and why we are here, the plot begins to thicken and some of us have now chosen to completely lose the plot. Why? Because we've decided to start writing our own scripts, our own programs, directing our own lives in movies, and hopefully moving on to the next stage of this experience, learning and growth in harmony. Nothing that we've talked about today is meant to be a fear campaign, because ultimately there's nothing to fear or be confused or even upset about whatever stage of life you are at on this journey. As cliche as it sounds, the truth will always set you free. Not necessarily when you lie, but when you've been lied to and you discover the truth. Thank you all for your time and patience. We look forward to the experience of learning, sharing, and growing with you all, regardless of what may or may not happen in our individual and collective lives. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and encourage you to share it as far and wide as you can. We also hope that in time, we can look back at this as proof in and of itself that there are people with eyes to see and ears to hear to help share and guide others to their true truth and destiny. Thank you and goodbye for now.